Everybody stand. Let's read the word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Before we read the word, open your mouth one more time and worship him. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's Yes, Lord. I'm going to skip around this, but I'm reading from Acts chapter 27, verses 18 through 36, and I'll skip around. Verse 18 says, The next day, as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. The terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. You ever felt like all hope was gone? They were in a storm and it felt like all hope was gone. And um, no one had eaten for a long time. And then finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and, never, and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But verse 22 says, But take courage. None of you will lose your lives. I want to know who receives that. Hey, even though the ship will go down, none of you will lose your lives. For last night, an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and he said don't be afraid Paul for you will surely stand trial before Caesar what's more God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you somebody say everybody's gonna make it so take courage for I believe God it will be just as he said I'm going to skip down to verse 30. Then the sailors tried to abandon the ship. They lowered the lifeboat as though they were going to put out anchors from the front of the ship. But Paul said to the commanding officers and the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. So the soldiers cut the ropes to the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair of your heads will perish. For not a hair of your head will perish. Then he took some bread and gave thanks to God before them all and broke a piece of it and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged and began to eat. I'm going to read my focus scripture. It says, but Paul said to the commanding officer and the soldiers, you will all die unless the salt sailors stay aboard. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, don't jump ship. Don't jump ship. Look at the other neighbor who may have been discouraged. Find somebody that wasn't praising God when everybody else was and say, don't jump ship. <laughs> Father God, we thank you. We give you glory and honor for this moment. We thank you for these, your people, which you've granted this, this opportunity to be in your presence. Father, we are so grateful for you. We're grateful for all that you do now. Father, we ask that you speak to us and through us so that you may be glorified and the body may be edified and the enemy may be horrified. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. I, I want to apologize to all the visitors. I know you're not used to this type of encounter. Some of you may not be, but we kind of crazy over here. Absolutely cray. But God keeps doing great things for us. 
So we have no option but to praise him for it. As a matter of fact, I've been getting testimonies all week of what God is doing in the individual partners. Anybody in a suddenly season right now? I mean, is there anybody that's gotten a sudden miracle that you want? Can you lift your hands and say, God, I thank you because I'm in a suddenly season. I'm in a suddenly season. Yes, Lord. I, I first, let me, let me do the protocol. I got to give honor to all whom honor is due to all the leaders of this house. We praise God for you. We honor you. To our chief apostle, um, Dr. Matthew Stevenson, we honor him as well. And to this amazing lady. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Trina, we... We love you. I'm asking you all. Um, you probably won't reach her this week. We're going to the Bahamas <laughs> for a few days. So don't look for us to be in no meetings because <laughs> we are meeting together. Amen. <laughs> we got to have our own meeting. <laughs> we got to have our own meeting and we bless him. We bless him. Um, we're still in our series called The Power of Impartation, and uh, we as a church family are learning how important it is to receive an impartation of grace, wisdom, knowledge, and power from those who have experience in doing what we are called to do. Uh, last week, our chief apostle, Dr. Matthew Stevenson, came and announced not only Pastor Trina and I as leaders, but he established this house as, lead, as leaders in this region, he established us as the house of the middle. And we, he said that we are midwives and we are called to push and we are called to the middle. And in doing that, he gave language and purpose for those in this house to this region. He, he, he declared what we are responsible to do and who we are for this area. We're not here just to jump and shout. Um, and, and do all that we do, but we're called to make a difference in this area, and we give God praise. And now we know, now that we know our assignment and we receive the impartation of power, you would think that everything around us would line up with our assignment. But I came to tell you that, that God's plan for our lives includes opposition. It includes opposition. There's nothing that God will call you to do that would not include some sort of resistance. For two reasons. Reason number one is it builds strength and endurance. It builds strength and endurance. Just like weight and resistance training builds physical muscle, obstacles and resistance builds spiritual stamina and strength. That's why Peter said in 1 um, Peter 5 and 10, but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. We, we don't ever want to hear the word suffering, but after you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect, which means he will make you mature, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Peter is telling us in the scripture that God is using our suffering to make us strong. He uses our suffering to make us strong. You would think that he, make, he uses your good times and your smiles to make you strong. But he uses what you go through to make you strong. So as much as we would like to be trouble-free, you cannot have strength without struggle. You cannot have strength without struggle. Ask any physical trainer what would happen if you stopped lifting weights. If you've been lifting for a while, then you just stop all of a sudden. The muscle you built would eventually become weaker and smaller because it's the resistance that builds your strength. Second thing God does with our opposition is he uses it to position us. He, he puts roadblocks and setback, setbacks and heartbreaks in our way to position us for where he's taken us. If you look back over your life right now, you could probably remember a few times where you were hurt when you thought you should have been strengthened. You went through certain things that you wish you didn't have to go through. Certain doors were closed that you wanted to be opened. Things that you wanted to happen did not happen. You're trying to figure out why did this happen? Because God uses what you go through to position you for where he's taking you. 
So there's some things that you had to go through in order for God to get the glory. Ask Joseph, did he want to be thrown in a pit? Ask Jesus, did he want Calvary? Jesus, the night before he went to Calvary, he said, is there any way you can do this without me going through this? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He knew what he was going to go through would hurt, but if it, it, it meant that God was going to get the glory and his will would be performed, he would go through it. He would go through the humiliation. He would go through the hurt because God uses what you go through to put you in position. We would not be able to be forgiven if Jesus had not endured the cross. Likewise, there are certain things that you would not have if you not, had not endured what you had to go through. God uses what you go through to position you. So we must be submitted to the will of God because I am confident in this very thing that he that has begun a good work in me. Somebody shout, he's doing a good work. It's a good work. It don't feel good, but it's a good work. And he will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. He will complete it. God doesn't start and not finish. Everything you're going through, God is starting something. He is not starting and going to leave you out there. He will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. So I wanted to make sure we as a church understood opposition as a part of the plan of God because I, doesn't want, I don't want us to receive and be excited about impartation but then be devastated when we meet resistance. Because right after we receive an impartation, right after the announcement is made, heaven and hell hears it. Don't you think that heaven didn't hear your announcement? And don't think hell didn't hear it either. Hell is aware of everything that's spoken over your life. And the job of the enemy is to try to buffet you. He can't stop what God said, but he can try to stop you from receiving it. And he can do that by distracting you and making you step back. So that's what happened. Jesus, right after, remember, he, he, was, he was announced. Um, he was baptized by John the Baptist. Right after that, the, um, the, the, the angel descended from heaven like a dove. On the, the, the Holy Spirit descended on his head like a dove. That same Holy Spirit, the same one that descended on him after God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, the same Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tested. So some of the stuff you think is the enemy is really God's testing you. God uses tests to put you where he wants you to be. You can't expect to be where God wants you to be without being tested before you get there. You know what? So Pastor Trina and I are in, uh, in an MDiv program right now. Uh, we're going to get our master's. And listening, listening to... Don't clap yet. I said, we trying. She's trying a little harder than me. But here's the thing. Listening to the lectures is easy. I love listening to the lectures. But it's the test. If I could get the degree without the test, I would have, I would have my doctorate by now. You can't have what God wants you to have without being tested before you get it. But the problem is we want everything handed to us without being tested before we get it. The impartation is the teaching. We're taught by these teachers. They give us a wealth of knowledge. They give us books. God gave us teachers. He gave us books. But we have to be tested. You can't say um, Howard University can test you, but God can't. You cannot have what God has for you without being tested. Last week we talked about the conversion of Apostle Paul and how he received an impartation from a believer named Ananias. But Paul's journey to teach the gospel didn't really start until he met a man named Barnabas in Acts chapter 11. The Bible says Barnabas was full of the Holy Spirit and he brought many people to the Lord. So in Acts chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas were worshiping together and the Holy Spirit instructed the prophets and the teachers that were there to anoint them and to send them on their journey. 
And when they went out, um, they had an assistant named John Mark with them. Now, remember that name, John Mark. All right, y'all got that? Remember that. Um, along the way, they started ministering all over to the Jews and Gentiles. And in one of the cities, John Mark decided he wanted to go back home. So Paul was like, okay, cool, I'm good. Uh, while they were in Greece, they healed a man who, never, who had never walked. And when the people saw this, they started worshiping and making sacrifices, not to God, but to Paul and Barnabas. They started making sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas, and Paul started shouting at the people, why are you doing this? We are human beings just like you. Do not worship us. Because they, know, they knew something. I want every leader in this house to understand. Every gifted person, even if you're watching me, I don't care how anointed we are. I don't care how powerful we become. We can never allow ourselves to be worshipped. Anything that receives worship other than God is an idol. And our assignment is to build altars, not idols. Look at your neighbor and say, we build altars over here. We don't build idols. Now mind you, Paul and Barnabas had just seen King Herod Agrippa killed because he received worship from people. So they were like, nah, we don't want that. You ain't going to do to me what got done to him. Because here's the thing, you, don't, you can't control what they do, but you can control what you receive. God didn't kill Herod because he made them worship him because he didn't, but he received it. You have the power to stop people from worshiping you by the way you respond to their worship. I, I can tell you what we do. Uh, oh, oh, you, you were so awesome today. Now, some, now, here's me. To God be the glory. Here's you. For real? You know what for real means? Give me some more. Give me some more. Give me some more. You know, I was trying, you know, could you hear me good? <laughs> Do not receive the worship of people. Because I tell you what, you will get addicted to it. And it will control your response. It will control what you do. You'll start to perform for the response of people. Right after you finish singing, you go to Instagram and see if anybody said anything. Nobody put up an Insta story of me? You will perform for the response of people if you allow them to worship you. And then you know what that means? They are controlling you. So Paul and Barnabas told everybody, don't worship us, don't do that. So the people who were trying to worship them, they got mad. They got mad at them for not letting them worship them. So they said, oh, are we going to stone you to death then? They started picking up stones and stoning Paul and Barnabas. And then uh, they, they thought they were dead, so they dragged them out to the end in, of the road or dragged them outside of the city and left them there. But then right after they left, Paul got right back up and went back into the same city and kept on preaching. Is there anybody in the room? that have had people leave you for dead. They turn their back on you. They thought they had you out, but then you get back up and you get, go right back to doing what God called you to do. Why? It's not you. It's not your strength. It's the assignment. And I can't die as long as I walk in my assignment. The assignment is keeping me alive. Somebody say, it, Apostle said, if you're alive, it's because God is not finished. Look at your neighbor and say, God is not finished. And I can't die until he finishes. You can go ahead and show me whatever negative report you want to show. You can go ahead and give me whatever negative prescription. You go ahead, negative doctor reports. You can tell me what people are saying. I still can't die until I finish my assignment. Until God is finished, I will be here. Let me keep moving. Somebody say, I'm going to be here. I ain't going nowhere. 
You can try to run me out. I, I'm not going nowhere. You can try to make me leave. What? Hey, I ain't going nowhere. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you say about me. I ain't going nowhere. And you can't kill me because you can't kill what God wants alive. After this happens, Paul and Barnabas continue to travel and preach the gospel, and they decide to go back to visit all of the places they had already ministered. But Barnabas decided he wanted to bring John Mark with them. Now remember, John Mark had left. And Paul was like, I know you lying. He already deserted us. Why would we bring him back when we needed him, when we were getting stoned, John Mark was chilling at the crib. But now you're going to tell me we got to bring him back now that we're clear, now that we're in the free, now that people are saying they, they, they believe in what we're doing. Now we're going to bring John Mark back. The devil is a liar. Let this be a message to some of you. I know we all have to forgive and forget. I know we all heard Apostle's message this morning about forgiveness. But just because I forgive you, and I do, that doesn't mean you get to come back and take the same place in my life you had before. If you desert, deserted me when I needed you the first time, you can do it again. If you left me for dead the first time, so I have to be a good steward of my space my anointing, and my sanity, and not let people in and out of it that I can't trust. Tell your neighbor, steward your space. Don't let people in and out of it that don't value you or what you're called to do. If you're going to be here, you're going to respect me, and you're going to respect the calling I have on my life. Steward your space. I got to move. This disagreement with Paul and Barnabas was about, about John Mark um, caused them to separate. It made them separate, never to return together again. They were anointed together. They were sent together. But now this disagreement was big enough to make them decide to go separate ways. I have a message for those of you that have felt so loyal to a group of people that you can't do what God has called you to do. You feel like if you're not with them, you're not with God. And you can't separate from them because you're so worried about hurting them, but you'd rather walk outside of the calling of God on your life. I'm not gonna yell, I'm gonna just say this. It's okay. It's okay. We don't have to be together forever. Unless you're married now. Trina Hairston ain't going nowhere. But everybody else, if God is calling you in a different direction, if God is calling me in a different direction, it's okay. And guess what? I ain't going to be mad at you. I'm not going to dishonor you. Here's the issue I have in church. You don't have to dishonor everything you leave. If God is calling you somewhere else, go but celebrate what they did in your life. You can't tell me they were amazing for a season and all of a sudden when you leave, they were awful. You don't have to dishonor it because you leave it. If it was necessary for a season, it was necessary in your life. Honor it and move on. Some of us 
are afraid to leave what we've been clinging to because we have a fear of loneliness. You're afraid of being alone. But God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So even if you're not with them, you're not alone. You've been holding on to them the way God wants you to hold on to him. God, I'm trying to calm down because this is passionate for me. God may be trying to do something with you and not them. This is not a couple call. This is not a group assignment. God is calling you, but everywhere he takes you, you're trying to take them. And they're not called to be with you everywhere God called you to go. When God brought Moses to the, to the, to the mountain, he said, Moses, you come up here. Aaron, you stay here. Joshua, you stay here. Because there's something I have to tell you alone. But you're trying to take everybody with you to everything God has taken you to do, taking you through. It's okay. I'm coming to my text in a minute. I'm trying to move on. Paul leaves Barnabas and he continues his journey. He goes around preaching the gospel and uh, his assignment causes him to be thrown in prison a few times. The first time he was on his way to prayer and there was a fortune teller following him saying, these men are servants of God. And they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on for a few days, and finally, Paul turned around and cast the demon out of her. How did Paul know she had a demon? She wasn't saying anything wrong. She was saying, they're coming to tell you how to be saved, which was true. But this is what I found out. I need everybody to hear this. Just because they're following you doesn't mean they're for you. Just because they're flattering you doesn't mean they believe in you. They may flatter you, they may say nice things to your face, but some of the people connected to you are there on demonic assignment to keep you distracted and frustrated. The same people that are saying, you're so good at what you do. They are demonically assigned to you. But I declare by the power of God that every demonic assignment that's been attached to your, you or your family will be revealed and cast away from you in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, open your mouth and receive it right now. Open your mouth and give God praise. I will not be attached to demonic activity. They will no longer have a place in my family. They will no longer have a place in my home. I am released from them, and they are released from me. They will not distract me. They will not keep me bound. They will not keep me hostage. I cut off every demonic friend in the name of Jesus. Let it be revealed and lo loose from me. Paul cast the demon out of that woman, and the people who made money off of her began, um, um, got so angry because they were making money because she was a fortune teller. They were making money off of her because she was a fortune teller. She was demonically depressed, but they were making money off of her. Some people around you are benefiting from your bondage. I'm telling you what the Bible says. They were making money off of her bondage. They were making money off of her demonic depression. They are de benefiting from you being broken. They see, they see you crying. It makes them feel better because they're crying too. They see you broken. They get happy because they broke too. But I declare by the power of God that you will no longer be bound to make anyone else good. You will no longer be bound to make anyone else happy. You will no longer be bound to make anyone else comfortable. You will be free. You will not be broken. And you will not be broke. Just because it makes somebody else comfortable. Somebody declare, I am free. 
<laughs> that woman left free, but they took Paul and Silas to jail. She left free. They took Paul and Silas to jail. It's funny that the people who are called to the middle will minister something they don't get to keep themselves. Make sure this is what you want. Because you're interceding for somebody and you take on what they, what they get free from. Anybody ever been praying for somebody who was sick and then you feel sick yourself? You're called to the middle. That's what intercession is. You take on what they're, what they're experiencing. The woman left free, but the jailer ordered um, Paul and Silas to stay in jail, and they shackled them. They shackled them. I'm coming to my text in a minute. We're going to be done soon. But, the, but they didn't know that there was two types of people that you can't keep in bondage, a worshiper and an intercessor. You can't bind somebody that knows how to build an altar. You know why? Because the Bible says that where two or three are gathered in my name, there shall I be in the midst. And who can put chains on God? Who can bind up the king of kings? So they built an altar in the middle of the prison. They, you can keep men in chains, but you can't keep God in chains. He said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So they built an altar right in the middle of the jail. Some people are trying to get, find peace in your home, trying to get freedom in your home. You better stop burning that sage and incense and build an altar in your house. Open your mouth right in your living room, right in your bedroom. Start laying your hands on the wall and say, I will have freedom in this house. Build an altar in your living room. Build an altar in your stairwell. Everywhere there's a place, open your mouth and praise God and say, there will be freedom here. I will have peace in my house. It works. You don't know what that smoke is doing. You don't know what that sage is doing. You, hey, we ain't doing no seances in the kingdom of God. You better open your mouth and get the presence of God in your house. I know I just made a whole bunch of people mad that bought a whole new pack of incense. Throw it away and open your mouth and pray. I don't care how it smells. Get you some cologne and worship the Lord in your house. We got to move. We got to move. We all know the story. We know the story. Paul and Silas prayed and they sang hymns and at midnight there was an earthquake that rocked the jail. It rocked the jail. And when the jail rocked, every, every prison door flew open. Every shackle broke. Not just the people that were singing. Not just the people that were praying. But everybody in the prison got free. Is there anybody that got a praise that will not only free you, but it will free everybody attached to you? Is there anybody that can shout until everybody in your house can get free? I dare you to open your mouth and give God a praise if you know there's a power. There's power in my shout. There's power in my prayer. There's power when I worship. And when I worship, everybody around me got to be free. Ain't none of us going to be bound. Yeah. I got to go. Hey. Can we shout right now? I think somebody in the room needs to be free. Can we shout till there's freedom all over the room? Come on. Open your mouth. Hey, 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 hey. I want everybody in this house to be free. Shout till freedom rises up. Hey. Shout till freedom rises up. Shout till chains break. Oh! 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 
Every shackle will be broken. Every shackle. Hey. There will be freedom here. I said there will be freedom here. I said there will be freedom here. Open your mouth and shout. Let me finish this. Y'all sit down, let me finish this. Hey, hey, hey. You show me my na na my na na say ya da. Oh, talk na ya da ba, ho so da ba. Yeah. Ho so da ba, yes, so ti ba ya ya. Oh, na my na 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 ma, si da ba ho so ya. Oh, na my na say. Let's finish this. Yes, Lord. Let's finish this. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey. Now, so now, after Paul is released, he goes on fulfilling his assignment. He preaches on his journey. He goes to cities like Antioch and Ephesus and Thessalonica and Corinth, all the cities he wrote epistles to, he visited on his journey. But he wasn't arrested again until he went back to Jerusalem. He went back to, isn't it funny how you can be appreciated all over the world, but you face the most trouble at home? Jesus said a prophet is without honor in his own home. He's celebrated everywhere else. He's out of honor with own home. So you don't think it's strange when you minister to people all over the world and you receive well, but you give, give the people um, that you know the same message and they don't receive it. Jesus himself could do no miracles where he lived because the people there couldn't see him as the Messiah. They could only see him as the carpenter's son. There are people that are attached to you. They can't see you past where they left you. They can't see you past their last experience with you. But I tell you what, you don't need their approval to be anointed. You're powerful and anointed, but the people that know you can't see you because all they know is what you did. But you don't need their approval to walk in your assignment. You don't need their affirmation. You don't need their pat on the back. Stop waiting for it because you will frustrate yourself trying to get the approval of the people that you know. You will frustrate yourself because you think there's something wrong with you. No, it's because of the biblical principle. You will not get the same honor in your own house. Be free from that. Be free from that. I said be free from that. Oh, hey, why do I feel that in here? Be free from that. Stop trying to get the approval of people, especially the people that you're connected to. It's frustrating you, it's hurting your feelings, it's making you doubt your responsibilities, making you doubt your calling, it's making you doubt your assignment. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm not anointed. Maybe I'm not gifted. Maybe God didn't really choose me. No, the devil is a liar. You, you, hey, you are who God called you to be. You are assigned to a certain group of people, just not that group of people. And it's okay. That's my new model. It's okay. I'm not even going to yell with you. I'm not even going to get all riled up. You don't have to approve me. You don't have to affirm me. It's okay. Paul was in the temple and the mob saw him and started beating him and had him arrested. I'm coming in. And so the Roman officers started beating him and Paul shouted out that they had no right to beat him 
without trial because he was a Roman citizen. This is what happened. Paul was a Roman citizen. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Rome had taken, taken control of Jerusalem. It had taken t- control of the Jews. And so the people there had the option. Certain people who had been educated enough had the option of becoming citizens of Rome. So Paul made himself a citizen of Rome. And now the people from the, uh, the, um, the Romans did not have the power to treat him the way they treated the Jews because he was a Roman. Now, what does that mean for you? Some of you have allowed yourself to be treated like everybody else. But 1 Peter 2 and 9 said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are an heir to the kingdom of God. So the enemy has no right or authority to make decisions or movement without a release from heaven. That's why when Satan asked, talk, started talking to Job, and God said, have you considered my servant Job? Job said, I mean, Satan said, I can't get to him. You have a hedge around him. He could not even do anything to Job without the permission of the Father. The enemy can't do anything in your life until God allows it. So if God allowed it, that means God's going to use it. God uses what he allows. God does not waste. He does not even waste your trouble. But all things, everything you go through is working together. I'm moving on. Paul stays in prison after he lets the guards know he's a citizen of Rome. And he appears before the officers, because they don't know, but they don't know what to do with him. So um, they don't want him to be free. But they, they didn't want to kill him either, because they can't. They can't kill him, but they can't set him free. So they decide to send him to Rome. They said, let's let's send him to them. Let's let them deal with him. And that's where I'm I'm coming to my text now. I got about 10 minutes to do this. (laughs) Y'all pray for me. Uh, Initially, everything was good when we were on this boat. They decide, okay, we're going to send him to Rome. And they they put him on a ship. And he's on his way with 275 other people. 276 people on the boat and all. And it started getting more dangerous as the boat went on. Initially it was cool, but then they hit a storm. But the, and then Paul told the officers, y'all need to turn back, because this storm about to get bad. But the officers said, no, nah, we're going to go, because they, they, they had a place they were trying to get to, and they didn't want to heed the warning of Paul. Here's a simple message for everybody in the room. Don't ignore the warnings. Don't ignore the warning. Can I confront your ego for a minute? A lot of the stuff you've been saying is is the voice of the enemy has really been the voice of the Lord warning you. See, I knew y'all was going to get quiet. That's why I wanted to make y'all shout before. The stuff that you think is the enemy and the stuff you've been rebuking is God saying, don't do that. But you've been saying, no, the devil is a liar. God promised me that cattle on a thousand hill, but he also will warn you against what you're not supposed to go for. You love that man. He said, God promised me him. He said, no, don't do that. No, God promised me. And now you're in a relationship crying, praying for freedom praying for breakthrough. If you would have heeded the warnings, you married and they, and you said, well, I just needed a friend. So you make friends with somebody and that friendship get a little bit more friendly than it's supposed to be. You were warned in the beginning Don't ignore the warnings. I know y'all mad at me now. It's okay. Don't ignore the warnings. It's okay. Here's what you don't want to realize. The Holy Spirit doesn't just confirm. We think the Holy Spirit is only there to confirm the stuff we want, but sometimes he warns against the thing that you're not supposed to have. 
And he warns you against the places you're not supposed to go. Don't ignore the warnings. The crew ignored Paul, so they kept sailing and the storm got worse. It got so bad that in verse 18, the Bible says they started throwing cargo overboard. Isn't it funny that when you're in a storm, the stuff you thought you needed will lose its importance. The stuff you thought was necessary, when, you, when you're in a storm, it loses its, necess its necessity. Uh, necessity. There you go. I got it. Didn't 2020 teach us that, though? Before 2020, we were like, uh, we only had enough time to get in the house and sleep. But then once you hit that pandemic, and the fear of death came in, you found out, I don't have to do that. I'm good. I can stay in this house 24 hours, and I'm going to live, and I'm going to be happy. Everything I need is right here. But here's the bad thing about fear, though. It will make you panic. And it's easy to make bad decisions when you panic. Verse 19 says, not only did the crew start throwing cargo off, but they started throwing the ship's gear off. The stuff they needed, they were throwing overboard. They were panicking. Remember in the, in the beginning of the pandemic, people started going crazy over tissue? <laughs> Nobody ever said we was going to run out. But all of a sudden, we all got caught crazy and people fighting over toilet tissue. Panic! You'll you lose peace in the panic. you lose joy in panic. It affects your eating habits. It affects your sleeping, ha sleeping habits. When you should be resting, your heart is racing and you're up pacing the floor. That's not insom insomnia. That's panic. The Bible said the crew wasn't even eating. Paul got them together and said, um, I, should, I told y'all before not to do this, but take courage. Because an angel of the Lord told me, don't be afraid. Because not only will I make it to my destination, but everyone sailing with me. Everyone sailing with me. Don't you know there are accidents that did not happen because you were in the car? Yeah. There are planes that did not go down because you were on them. And it's not because you're so good, but because there's a word over your life. Look at your neighbor and say, you better thank God for the word over my life. Because it's saving me and everybody attached to me. I'm closing here. Verse 27 says, after 14 days... They were still in the storm, but they realized they were coming close to shore, and the crew became afraid that the ship would crash on the rocks on the shore. So they, the crew decided to abandon ship. They started lowering a lifeboat to save themselves, but they were going to let all the people on the ship die. They said they were going to go save themselves, but they were going to let the people on the ship die. But Paul got to the commanding officer and said, if you leave this ship, not only will you die, but we'll all die also. This is my message, and I'm done, I promise. There's somebody in this room. You've received an impartation. You're very clear about your assignment and your responsibility, but the storm has been so rough that you made up in your mind that it was time to abandon your assignment and save yourself. You've already made up in your mind, let somebody else handle this. Let somebody else drive this ship. Let somebody else take care of this responsibility, but I have to, I, 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 it's time for me to look out for me now. It's time for me to look out for myself now, for my own mental safety. I'm tired of trying to save everybody else. I need to save myself now. But the word of the Lord to you today is don't jump ship. Don't jump ship. Don't abandon your assignment. See, y'all wanted me to shout it out. I, I, we shouted before. Stay on your post. Because if you leave your post, you're leaving the will of God. 
and God's protection is in his will. So once you leave his will, you leave his protection. What you're stepping into doesn't have the protection of God. And, and here's the crazy thing. Somebody else's life is depending on you staying on post. Are you really willing to let them die? There are lives attached to your yes. I know that's not what y'all wanted to hear. I know somebody wanted to hear, oh, go ahead and let it go. God got something else for you. No. <laughs> Don't abandon your assignment. You want to just give it up. You just want to give up on it. Is, is there anybody who just felt like giving up? <laughs> I don't I, know. I, okay. M maybe it's just me. Okay, no problem. You want to leave what you, you want to leave your post, leave what you were called to do. You want to leave your assignment. But if you give up, people will die. If you give up, people will lose their lives, spiritually and physically. You, oh, it's not that deep. Yes, it is. Do you know that unless you deliver the word to some of the people you're attached to and you're assigned to, they will go the wrong way and die? We have a responsibility to the call on our lives. And so, so the, so the uh, crew say, okay, um, we'll stay. We won't leave. We'll, we'll stay. And they cut the ropes of the lifeboat. They cut the ropes of the lifeboat. Some of you are doing this. You'll say, I'll stay in my assignment, but you still got your just in case. You got your, if this don't work out. God is saying, cut the ties. Get rid of your plan B. I know y'all don't want to hear this. Get rid of your just in case. Get rid of your thing you got saved just in case this don't work out. You can't be all in and thinking about, well, I got this just in case this don't work. You got to let it go. Cut the ties. Cut the ties of everything that you had. I'm going to just close this because now... I'm feeling something. Cut the ties of everything you had saved. So what, once, he, once they cut the ties, Paul said, okay, cool. Now everybody come together. All, all the people on the ship come together. Y'all can play something. Um, everybody on the um, ship come together. And he said, y'all haven't eaten in weeks. Y'all haven't eaten in weeks. It's time to eat now. You've been so worried and consumed by what's going to happen to us that you're killing yourself right now. Some of you have been consumed in worry so much that your worry is killing you more than what you're going through is. Your worry is destroying your mind, not your situation. Do you know what worry is? Do you know what that anxiety is? Anxiety is unused adrenaline. So if you, here's, here's the deal, and I'm going to move on. If you run and the adrenaline gets built up, or if, then it gets used. The adrenaline you have saved is used. But if you decide to run but don't, that adrenaline is still there, and it becomes stress. So the stuff you're worried about protecting yourself against, that you never actually have to use, it becomes stress, and it kills your body. Your worry is killing you, not your situation. Paul said, eat something. So he gathered them all around. He gathered them all around and said, Let, let's get something to eat. And, and, they, and he took a piece of bread and he thanked God. Now here's the thing. They were still in the storm. The Bible never said the storm stopped. But right in the middle of the storm, they stopped and got something to eat. Right in the middle of the storm, they lifted their hands and said, God, I thank you. I thank you because you are a preserver. Hey, you will preserve me, you will preserve my family, you will keep me, you will keep me and everything attached to me. So right in the middle of my storm, I say thank you. And then they ate. There's somebody in this room right now 
You're in the middle of a storm. You're in the middle of a storm right now. You're trying to figure out what to do. You can't fix it, but you can thank God in the middle of it. You can thank God in the middle of it. And guess what? God controls the storm. You control your response. If he can test you and make you and see if you, how you respond in the storm, he can stop it. Because guess what? You don't get tested forever. Once you pass the test, the test ends. But if you don't pass it, the text keep, test keeps happening. You got to keep repeating all over again. I hate the fact that I might have to go through some of this semester all over again. Because I didn't pass all the tests. Some of you have not passed the test, so you're going to have to repeat it again. But the first test is will you stay? Will you stay on your post when it seems like going, going, jumping off of your post is easier to do? Will you cut off the plan B? Or will you stay where you're supposed to be? You can't say, I'm anointed to do this when it feels good. Are you only anointed in the good times? You can't receive an impartation and put it down when you're mad. You can't unbe what you become. You can't undo an impartation. Once you receive knowledge, once you receive power, you can't give it back. And you can't put it down. A mantle is a mantle. Don't jump ship. I know I probably disappointed somebody today because somebody wanted to be free from their assignment. You saw the title, Don't Jump Ship, and you're like, yeah, God's going to do something for me. I can't wait to hear this word. The responsibility is yours. And you don't get to put it down. The call is yours. And you don't get to put it down. You are not released. I know we free you from everything else, but you are not released from your assignment. God is the only one that has the power to release you from what he called you to do. Don't jump ship. Real quick, I want to pray for somebody who thought about giving up. And I'm talking about somebody who had a specific call in your life and you thought it was time to let it go. If that's you, come now. Come now. There's not going to be a full altar call. I don't want everybody to come up here. I want somebody who is really thinking about giving up on their assignment. Yeah. 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 You thought giving up would be easier than moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what God called you to do? But you didn't want to do, you don't want to do it anymore. You're arguing with your assignment. You're mad at your calling. You are not released from God's responsibility. Everybody just wants to lift your hands. Yeah. 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 Release it. You don't get to say no to what God called you to do. Lift your hands all over this room. 
Yeah. Somebody's getting free right now before we even lay a hand. Hey, shove the bahani on the man, soup the baya da koda mayan and say the bad. Oh, be the other man, soup to be a shadi baya no soup. The calling on your life is too important for you to be frustrated and let it go. Make peace with it. You will be who God called you to be. Everybody in this room, open your mouth and start praying. Hold up by hand, she had a bahasi. Hold up by freedom is happening at this altar. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Hey, and a man, see a bashi. Oh, to by my anime, oh, shadaba. Oh, so by my anaman, see a bashi. Yes, Lord. Oh, ku bashi, the bashi. Hana man, so agree with it. Hana bayan, see the bashi, the bashi. Hey, and a man so the Mayashi. Yes, Lord. Hey, you will be who God called you to be, and you will do what God called you to do. Hiya na man say ya. Somebody start praying in this room. Open your mouth. Anamayana, turn it up, turn it up. Open your mouth. Oh the Maya Nan say ya. Oh the Baya Shay Bai. Oh the Maya Nana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, show na. Oh to Maya Nayan say ya na base. Yes, yes, my answer is still yes. I said my answer is still yes. I said my answer is still yes. I will not refuse. I will not walk against it. I will stay on my post. How that show? I will stay on my post. I said I will stay on my post. Oh na ma ya na ma. Oh na ma ma ya na ne. Show na ma ya. Oh to ma ya ne. Oh so na ma se ya. Oh to ya. Yeah, my young man said, Hey, I'm a baba, say, I'm a man, I'm a young man, so the baba, get so the baba, oh, so the Maya Nancia, oh, the Maya said, the man, oh, the baba, oh, so ya, oh, the baba, I'm a man, say, I say, oh, the baba, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, oh, the baba, I'm a man, build it up, come on. Open your mouth, hold the mama ya da da ba ku sho da ma sa. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, come on, come on, come on, hold the mama ya sa. I need to get to a certain place before we move on. Open your mouth. Hold the mama de da ba ba ku sho da ma. Hey, hey, sho da ma. Oh, sho da ma ba da ba ba. Oh, sho da ma. Oh, da ma. Oh, da ma ye she da ba ku sho. Everybody pray in this room. Somebody's getting free right at this altar. I said we offer no resistance. I said we offer no resistance. What's up, the Maya Nababa called the Baba Shedebe? Who the Maya Nababa sold the Maya Nesu? The Yadaba Santa Bell, so. What's up, the Mamma Nababa sold the Maya Nasaya? What's up, the Maya Nasaya? Who told the Maya Nabaka Shanda? Hold the Baba Sito Baba Yanase. Hold the Maya Nanana, so the Baba Yanase. You're the Mamma Yandiaso. Oh, the Mamma Shaya. We lift you high. Come on. Yahweh, Yahweh. Come on. We lift you high. Come on, lift it up. Yahweh. Falling. 
now they give them glory. God is a healer. I am Lord that healeth thee. I am Lord your healer. That's what he's saying. Yeah. I sent my word and heal your disease. Yeah, shut up. I am the Lord, your healer. Can you lift your hands if you believe God is a healer? I am the Lord, that healeth me. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. Yeah. I am the Lord, your healer. Father, we ask you now to let your healing power be manifest in this your daughter. In the name of Jesus, we trust you. Yeah, we trust you. You were wounded for our transgressions. Thank you. You were bruised for our iniquities. Thank you. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. Thank you. And by your stripes, yea, sure. By the beating, hey, so the Baha'i, we are healed. So, Father, we thank you, not for what you're going to do. But what for what was already done? It's already done in her body. It's already done in her mind. Everything the doctor said could not happen. Hey, show, show who you are. They've proven what they think they know, but show them what you're able to do. Heal and deliver. Ananso, do it for your glory. Hananan said. Let the doctors be amazed at what you have done. Hey, shut the Bahaya da Bahudas. Let the doctors be amazed at what you're able to do. And we'll give you praise for it in Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. And we'll give you praise for it. I'm looking for immediate results. Hey, so the I'm looking for a sudden result. Hey, Yanamaya. We gotta go. Anybody need to be saved? Come now. Anybody wanna be saved? Come now. Anybody wanna be filled with the Holy Spirit? Come now. 
Anybody want to join this church? You feel like this is your house? This is the church you want to belong to? You want to partner with this ministry? Come now. If this is the place, no other place is the right place. If that's you, come now. If you're at home and you want to partner with this ministry, you can go to allnationsdc.com forward slash partner. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody else, if this is the home, if this is your home, come now. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Uh, hallelujah. What's your name again? Justin. This is Justin Chin, everybody. We give God praise for Justin. <laughs> Pastor Trina already claimed him as a son before he walked up here. So we were expecting this. <laughs> and we give God the glory. We give God. Somebody say, every son is coming home. I dare declare that even in your house, everybody that you thought would be wayward, the people that you thought would be lost, the people that you thought would never come home, somebody say, every son, everybody attached to me is coming home. I declare it to be so. There will not, hey, there will not be one lost. I dare to say, hey, if you believe in somebody, say, there will not be one lost. I said, there will not be one lost. Hey, hey. Justin, we love you and we praise God for you. Um, we're glad you made the right choice. There you go, okay. Yeah. After you finish hugging Mama Trina, you can go and follow. <laughs> Lord, these hugs. <laughs> everybody that has been hugged that way, you know what that's like. Um, we praise God for everybody who came and was here to experience the glory. Justin, follow the, the pom-poms. Can we welcome Justin home, everybody? Let's all stand on our feet. We praise God for his move today. We praise God for his presence. Praise God for his glory. By way of announcement, October 24th, that's about three weeks. Somebody say, we are going home. Now let's do this. Let's honor Impact One Church. Come on, clap your hands. We praise God for Pastor Wilder and First Lady Melanie Wilder. Come on, make some more noise than that. See, for those who you don't understand, we have some visitors here. This building belongs to Pastor and First Lady Melanie Wilder and the Impact One Church. They said, hey, y'all come in here and worship here. Without any competition, without any restriction, they allowed us to come and worship here. I speak that unto you as well. There are going to be some people that so into your life without any prerequisites for it, without any holes on it. There won't be any ties attached to it. God is going to call somebody to bless you in a way where you need it. And they're not going to look for a handout in return. If you receive it, open your mouth and give God a praise because the same oil on the head falls on the foot on the floor and the same oil on the head falls on the people that are attached to it. So everybody receive that oil. You're going to receive favor in unnatural ways, unusual ways. People are going to bless you that you didn't even ask for their blessing. You didn't even ask for the favor. But surely, surely and suddenly it's coming to your house just like it's in my house. If you believe it, open your mouth and say, I receive a suddenly blessing. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. I said he's able to keep us from falling. I said he's able to keep us from falling. I said he's able to keep us. From falling. I said, he's able to keep us. Hey, I won't fall. Look at your neighbor and say, I won't fall. Hey, I said, I won't fall because God is able to keep me from falling and he's able to present me faultless in spite of what I did in spite of my past sin he's thrown it away to the sea of forgiveness forgiveness and he's able to present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory somebody lift your hands and say glory honor dominion it is so 
in Jesus name that give God a praise amen amen God bless you